You're listening to an Anazal Ministries podcast. Are you un poco loco for Coco this Halloween? Man, I sure hope so. Guys, welcome back to the SG Drive-In, our Halloween edition. And this time it is a little bit of a bait and switch. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you guys, this movie isn't actually about Halloween. It's about uh, Dia de Muerta. And we're going to discuss how that holiday is related to Halloween and Reformation Day and All Saints Day and All Souls Day and all the holidays that have been all right there at the end of October, beginning of November. We're really excited for it, guys. I'm one of your hosts today, Joshua Knoll. I am the co-host of the Whole Church Podcast. I am joined today by the other co-host of the Whole Church Podcast, the, the greatest co-host of all time, TJ Tiberius Juan Blackwell. And we are also joined by your favorite Lutheran pastor, Pastor Will Rose of Holy Trinity Chapel Hill. He is the chill, will, thrill, Wilbo Baggins. He has more nicknames than you could imagine someone with a name like Will should have. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> interesting fact, uh, at at the church, at my church, I actually hung out with Joshua in person at, under under the same roof, which was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we talked about that on my other show, The Whole Church Podcast, recently. In fact, mm-hmm. this Wednesday, so go back and listen to that. But today, we're here to talk about Coco, a Disney Pixar movie that has to do with Dia de Muerta. Okay, guys, so we just went to the drive-in. Just imagine with me, right? And we watch this movie. We see Coco, and I put the car in drive. I pull away. What's the first thing you guys say leaving the theater? Remember me. Yeah, TJ just starts singing. <laughs> Maybe he'll do a rendition for us later on. Yeah, probably. Yeah, Not. I think for me, it hits me a different way because my, my grandmother had dementia in the last years of her life. My mom is wrestling with dementia now. And so this whole idea of forgetting, remembering, not remembering kind of hits hits kind of a tender spot, spot in my life. And so... I'm reflecting on what what can I do to help the legacy of those who can't remember or what can we do to remember? So yeah, it's a colorful movie. It's a, it's a bright movie. It's, it goes all over the place. Gorgeous. It's just, it's just a gorgeous movie. So I'm like, man, what they, some animators did a fine job on that one um, yeah. is, is one thought, but also like it hits hard of like how to remember our loved ones and how can we help them remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're leaving. TJ starts singing. Will does a really hard emotional note. And me, the driver, is slowly putting his phone away like he wasn't about to just play the soundtrack starting with Un Poco Loco. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, oh, OK, it just got emotional. Let me put this up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, man. But also, Un Poco Loco, fantastic song. That's the first yeah. thing I want to talk about. Why is that song not longer and why don't we listen to it? Every day, I do. It's so good. I listen to it all the time. <laughs> it's so good. When we went to Epcot, which is funny because Tiffany hasn't seen the movie, but me, my wife, and TJ all went to Epcot together, and we were in the Mexico section, and TJ and I just sung in Poco Loco. That's just what we did. That's all we needed to do. That's why we were there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but oh, I, I would probably talk about like how good the voice acting was like Gosh, yeah. probably the best child voice performance I've ever heard. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. The songs were amazing. The colors were amazing. The story was amazing. The acting was amazing. Like it, it was just all around. I can't think of a fault in this movie. Like, I yeah. love this movie. Yeah. I would, I would probably think like, Oh wow. That's like my new favorite Pixar movie. That's crazy. Yeah. I, it's hard. It's hard to beat that one. The, the thing is, there's so many good Pixar movies. I will always love Monster Inc. Because it's just, it's a classic. It's great. But Coco's, man, it's on up there. And what's funny is the first time I saw it, I thought I just didn't like this movie. I, was like, I thought that was pretty boring. And I think it's because there's there's two reasons for this. Right. First is because I Josh went with in, the bad opinions. Yeah, yeah. First is I have, a well, three opinions. Uh, one's I have bad opinions. The second <laughs> reason was I went in thinking it was a Disney animated film. So I was thinking it was going to be a sing along because, you know, so you see all the thing with the guitars, it's going to be like that. It's going to be constant singing. It's not that. Don't go in expecting that. It is a Pixar film that features music and is about music, which means it won't be a musical in the same way. Right. So that was one thing because I had a bad expectation. The other thing is, I just think the second time I watched it, I was in a more, I wasn't as closed off. I was more open to feeling what the movie was trying to portray. 
So I was able to kind of connect on that emotional level better. And this is a very emotional movie. Yeah. percent. Yeah. One hundred percent. Like I, it what came out in uh, 2017. So my kids were five years younger. So we were still in that, in that time frame of like each Disney movie that came out to the theater, we'd all go as a family and watch it and see what's going on. But, and it leans into a different culture, you know, Disney's like, Hey, we need to open up uh, to different cultures and lean into that. I don't know if there's any backlash to uh, them getting the culture wrong or not, or right. I mm-hmm. can't remember. Uh, sometimes that happens with Disney, but it seems like this one, they were like, yep, they, they nailed this one. Yeah. Everybody yeah. was just happy about this. Yeah. Yep. So TJ, could you break down real quick? What is this movie about? What's the general plot? Just so people know what we're talking about if they haven't seen it. So Which they should the- just go see it. The movie is about our main character, Miguel, uh, who is born into a family of shoemakers. But his passion is in music. He wants to be a musician. Music is banned in the house, in the family. And he finds out, well, he does find out. His mom, his, he does find out eventually. Spoiler alert, by the way, if you're listening (laughs) to this, you should have known that already. Right. Uh, Eventually, he finds out that his great grandpa was a musician who wrote some of the most famous songs in the world, which. I don't know if you missed that, but that's what happens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hector is wrote all of the songs that Ernesto de la Cruz sings. And it's about his journey to become that. And he gets a little bit sidetracked uh, in the world of the dead, where he tries to meet Ernesto de la Cruz, his hero, his role model, while, you know, coming into his own voice, singing, playing the guitar, thinks he's not allowed to do at home, and then <laughs> finds out that guy's evil and killed his real great grandfather who is coco's father is it great or great great i don't know i think it's i think it's great i'm pretty sure it's great but his great grandfather was killed by ernesto de la cruz ernesto de la cruz stole all of his songs and that's like our our climax of the movie is finding that out and uh getting once he's in the land of the dead his main goal is to get hector's photo back on an ofrenda he didn't know hector was his great grandpa at the time and Finding that out, that uh, Miguel's dead family, the ones chasing him around the Day of the Dead, uh, to give him his blessing, give him their blessing, uh, mm-hmm. but no music, is uh, the same people who are avoiding Hector and who took him off the ofrenda. That's pretty much it. It might have been a, a, a bit of a discombobulated yeah. uh, summary. Yeah, there's also this plot where Hector is trying to avoid the final death. Yes. Because when you are forgotten, you die in the land of the dead and you're just dead dead. And because his picture is not up, people are likely to forget him. And there's only one person left who remembers who he is. So there's this sense of urgency throughout the film for him as well. And that that really kind of drove the plot for me where I was like, okay, this is what makes it interesting. There's huge stakes in this film. Pastor Will, <laughs> how does this movie compare to your other favorite Halloween films? Because this is pretty different from our other picks so far. Yeah, I think, you know, it's not a slasher movie it's not like blood and gore it's not jump scares or zombies but but the real horror or the urgency is that like what if you fade away and no one remembers you <laughs> yeah. you're only a couple yeah. generations from people and that can be scary and i i think yeah like it it really put on me this kind of sense of urgency to do a little bit more digging and learn about my family tree my granddad my great granddad who who came over uh from overseas was their family like like yeah, it, the and thinking about my own life, yeah, there might be a little different because I'm just somewhat in the public eye as as a pastor um, at, who've been a part of different communities of faith. But yeah, in terms of my own family, I'm only a couple of generations, and no one's going to know remember who I am. And for me, that's that's kind of sad. That's kind of scary. So so how can you keep your legacy in in, in a healthy way and um, for, for your folks? So yeah, I think it falls in Day of the Dead. It's not the zombie movie uh, Day of the Dead. It's a different one. Um, it's it's what what is death? What is your mortality? What does horror do? But like help you face your own mortality and then help push you to reflect on what you truly value in scary situations. And I, I think this does. Where where do we where what do we value most? Um, and then and then there's that subplot like you said, like plagiarism and taking advantage of other people and how they could be forgotten. And their story forgotten by being exploited or or taken advantage of uh, that no one would ever know that story uh, how sad that is so I, I think it fits I think it definitely definitely fits yeah yeah the theme and everything else might stand out 
I mean, not the theme, the, the colors, the vibe, all of that. The fact that it's a cartoon might stand out compared to our other drive-in films, but how it handles death is very similar to these other, even classic horror films. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's really an existential horror movie. Mm-hmm. Also, yeah. I would forgive somebody if they called it a creature flick. Explain. Yeah. No. Expand. Expand. <laughs> uh, the, uh, I forget what they're called. Oh, the... Um, Alabrijes. The Alabrijes? Yeah. Uh, yeah. not the dog. He's not scary. But <laughs> grandma's. Yeah. Grandma's Alabrije. Why does she have a chimera? That's terrifying. <laughs> yeah. True. It's like the only one we see in the movie that is straight up a monster. True. Everyone else's is just an animal. All right. So, uh, Pastor Will, zero to 10. How are you rating this thing? Uh, 9.34. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, a. am gonna be con- contrary in here. I just, I don't want to give it a 10 out of 10 only because when I compare it to my favorites, I'm like, I don't like it that much, but I seriously can't find a flaw in it. And I can't imagine myself finding times that I just don't want to watch it. I'm giving it a 9.9 just because I don't want to give it a 10. (laughs) That's it. Uh, Yeah, I'm going to do the same thing. (laughs) 9.9. You guys have, we don't have to talk about it now. You don't have to talk about it now, but there are movies out there you give a 10. Are there, is there a perfect film? Captain America and the Winter Soldier? No. Okay. Yeah. Probably not. I think perfection is unattainable. Oh, yeah? Have you seen Star Wars A New Hope? Mm -hmm. What about Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom? Because those are the three that I'd give a 10. That's it. (laughs) Yep. And Coco's just slightly underneath with a 9.9. It's so good. It is just so good. Guys, man. All right. Well, man. TJ, what what do you know about the Day of the Dead? Outside of this movie, what do you know about Dia de Muertos? Uh, So Dia de los Muertos... uh, I think my first exposure to it was from the Scooby-Doo movie, Curse of Chupacabra. Perfect. Uh, we just did a Chupacabra horror house earlier this year. at a. Oh, yeah, it was oh, a lot oh. less scary than the Scooby-Doo movie. Yeah, that's uh, true. But uh, basically, it is about, like the whole holiday is about my favorite way of dealing with you know the loss of a loved one, which is celebrating the good memories and having a good time in their honor. That's, that's what I'm all about. That's the New Orleans experience. Yeah, at least that's what I, I thought of it as until then. They have some weird, weird traditions, too, where like one day is when like uh, the adults come. But then there's a separate day where the children are out. So it's it's like it's really more than just a day. But I don't completely understand how that yeah, in some in some parts of Mexico, it can last up until like the 6th oh, of man. November. Yeah, but yeah. It, it's it's regional. Yeah, just like a season of remembering your dead. And, yeah. Yeah. It's which, a which, cool it, holiday. Yeah, and, and it has a lot to do with, with some of the original Celtic ideas that become our Halloween today and that were kind of transfused with All Saints Day as well. Um, because uh, the, the belief with Dia de Muertos is a lot to do with um, it being a day that we are especially close to the spiritual world, where the spiritual world and our world can interact a little bit more than usual. And that gets back in Celtic tradition. So you have like old Ireland – they basically just believe that a lot of their pagan religiosity kind of stuff revolved around the seasons and uh, fall when, you know, the end of the crops, things are starting to you know die out all that. They thought that that is when that time you were closest to spirit world and eventually it evolved to a specific day that this is the last harvest day. That's when the spirits visit us. The day before is when the demons are walking around. So we got to dress up sort of like demons so they don't come and get us, that kind of stuff. There's a lot of traditions that kind of, just kind of all accumulate together. There's one story of an Irish man who tricked death out of getting him a couple times until he eventually got stuck in a lantern. And that's why they have Jack lanterns. It's a weird story. Look it up. Yeah. His name was Jack. Yeah. Um, but th- there were, there were a lot of traditions like that. And when the church came along, like the church likes to do, they wanted to take that holiday for themselves and they tried to move it into like like the springtime for a while for some reason. And people just kept celebrating it during their original time because they're like, mm, we don't really care what you said, church. So eventually the church took the day and was like, well, yeah, it's when we're closest to the spirit world. Thus, All Saints Day. We'll think about the saints. And that's just how they did that. Then we have All Souls Day. And when the church's traditions make it over to some of these more Hispanic countries, I think that's what inspired a lot of the tradition and stuff with Dia de los Muertos. I didn't say that right, did I? You were close. Okay. But that's where we get that connection at. So that being said, Pastor Will, you're here as our, as our bona fide Lutheran, and 
I got to ask, as far as we're thinking of all these holidays at the end of October, beginning of November, where does Reformation Day, All Saints Day, All Souls Day, where, where do those religious calendar holidays fit into this conversation? Yeah, so kind of the, the history of the Reformation and Martin Luther is that you can go back and read about Martin Luther and all he did in terms of uh, the Reformation. But the, the legend goes that on October 31st, 1517, Martin Luther uh, wrote out 95 tweets and put them up on uh, Twitter, and it really became controversial, and he got canceled uh, by the Roman Catholic Church. No, that's not what happened. That's what happened. See, on All <laughs> Saints Day, uh, November 1st, uh, you know, Luther had a problem with some of the teachings of the Roman Catholic Church of that day. Uh, he saw some inconsistencies with traditions and what certain people were were preaching and and how and and with the Bible and the Scripture and, and this Word of Grace that you don't have to earn your own salvation. So he um, he knew people were going to come to church on a big festival holiday on November first, All Saints Day. He knew people were going to come. It's going to be a very crowded, busy day at the church. So kind of the bulletin board of the day, uh, the front door of the church. He nailed ninety five theses, his ninety five theses, these ninety five statements of how he disagreed with the inconsistency of the church tradition of indulgences with the word of scripture. And he posted this, nailed them to the door, church door so that when people came to church, they would see uh, what he had written to cause uh, really a, a call for debate. It wasn't like, hey, I'm leaving the church. I'm out of here. You guys suck. It wasn't anything like that. It was more like, these are 95 points. I would love to sit down and have a debate whether this is true or not. Uh, let's 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 talk about these things. So, um, since he knew everyone was going to be in church on November first, he did it on October thirty first, which is Reformation Day. Well, you know, we know the tradition of Halloween, All Hallows Eve, the the All Saints Day Eve. Uh, people did different parties and things and believe certain superstitions and traditions the night before a holy day. Perhaps the demons came out, the monsters came out. So you would do things to disguise yourself or put jack-o'-lanterns on the front door to ward off evil spirits because they knew they were out and about the day before All Saints Day. But mm -hmm. that did, that's not tied to the Lutheran traditions as much as Martin Luther just kind of posted his 95 Theses on October 31st. So would you say that he chose trick instead of treat for the Catholic Church? Yeah, I think he was like, he, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he would think probably his words were a treat for everyone to hear, but it ended up tricking um, and, and a big shift in church history from that day moving forward. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know, it, it's, it's interesting because I feel like you hear a lot of Christians or especially, you know, your college Christians, I would say. I think you know what I mean when I talk about that group. When someone says Happy Halloween, they like to do the Happy Reformation Day. Like, OK, guys, like Happy Halloween. Like, yes, it can be yeah. both, but you don't all need to respond to Happy Hallows, Halloween with Happy Yeah, All Hallows <laughs> Eve. It's still All Hallows Eve, the day before All Saints Day. So there's not a wrong statement. Halloween um, uh, is, is not a wrong statement. But, you know, yeah, there's a Reformation, yeah. Martin Luther tradition there. Um, and and it's, also, it's also just interesting because we do have this the sense that something is special about this time of year. We kept that. We kept a lot of the Celtic stuff that I mentioned earlier, and we meant, and we kept a lot of the the stuff from uh, Dia de Muerte. Some of those traditions seeped into American Halloween. So we have this weird mosh posh of, yes, there is some religious activity going on with the high church people. There is something special about the night, something magical, a lot of people would say. We have some of these Celtic traditions and dressing up, jack-o'-lanterns, all of that stuff. And... We have these other traditions of thinking about the dead, especially in our movies and all that. There's a large theme of death, and a lot of that comes from this Dia de Muerte stuff, all stuck together, which is which makes it one of the most truly American holidays when you think about it. Yeah. 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 So how important is it, when we're talking about All Saints Day, how important is it that we remember the saints that have gone before us? I mean, we don't want to worship saints or worship C.S. Lewis. This is the year of Lewis, right? But... Mm -hmm. We want to remember them. Where do we draw the line? Like, what is okay to do when it comes to that? Yeah, I think we, we always, there's there's role models and mentors that guide us through life, whether they're teachers, um, family members, friends, people we look up to uh, that, that help guide us, our, our lampposts and, and pillars that help 
lead along the way and guide us in our journey. And so the church has always um, lifted up the saints, uh, those heroes of faith who are examples of faith. Does that mean they're always perfect, that they always um, did everything perfectly, but we look up to them as role models uh, for our faith. And so, uh, and, and they encourage us and lead us. And so, you know, All Saints Day, November 1st, is really a day because the church has only 365 days uh, to say, to have specific days for, for specific saints. You know, December 6th is for St. Nicholas, my favorite uh, saint, you know, old Santa himself, St. <laughs> Nicholas. My middle name is Nicholas. You know, his day is, is December 6th. So, you know, you're going to just run out of days. But there are some people who don't get their own specific day, or there may be some saints who aren't canonized by the church, or you remember, mm-hmm. who say there are people who aren't recognized that did hero heroic acts of faith that we just don't know their story. So we're just going to acknowledge them and remember them on All Saints. And then in my church, we usually, um, you know, light candles or say prayers or ring a bell for our loved ones who've died over the last year. So it's not necessarily, well, yes, we remember St. Augustine and and uh, uh, St. Nicholas and all the saints uh, who we could ever possibly think of, but also those close to us, like my grandma Berlin or or others who've been role models for us or even died over the last year, we'll lift their name up and ring a bell to remember them on All Saints Day. Yeah, yeah. And that also gets to to the day after All Saints Day, but gets talked about a lot less. All Souls Day. I like that a lot. Because mm. it's th- there are people who we might not consider saints that are still worth the remembering, which is what a lot of this movie is about. That I which is part of why we love this movie so much. For me, is it has true I don't know if you would call it religious, but to me, it's there's a level of spirituality oh, in the well, theme that this movie hits at that I'm like, I need that. Like, I need to remember that, especially this year. I lost one of my grandfathers and I lost I lost my last grandfather and one of my grandmothers. And I'm like, yeah, I needed this movie mm-hmm. at this point in my life. And yeah, it's just a silly cartoon. But sometimes it's more than that. Yeah. TJ says no. I don't think anybody would call Coco just a silly cartoon. They shouldn't. <laughs> Yeah, TJ, what, what what do you think? Where how important is it to remember the dead? I uh, I would say very. It depends on your current mental state for some people. Yeah. Um but generally it's important to remember uh your past loved ones. Yeah. Well, and, and then there's the heroes too. There's the uh, standing on the shoulder of giants. Is there so for so for me it is CS Lewis ironically. Is that I'm like I remember his life, I stand on his legacy, and I try to build on that the best that I can. Is there anyone for you, TJ, that you're like this is the dead guy for me? The v the one dead guy for me. Yeah, yeah, um, the dead Jesus guy. Christ, amen. <laughs> He's not dead. He is alive. Yeah, <laughs> uh, technicality. There you go. <laughs> He's living on the inside. Living. But yeah, have you? Ever- <laughs> All right, that's enough podcast for me. <laughs> like copyright stricken. <laughs> okay, but but other you ever than heard Jesus, Steve-O. Steve-O, yes, yeah. but I can't yeah, remember him. who it is. Oh, well, that'd be very <laughs> funny if you did. Oh, uh, but not that I can think of. I'm not building off of a legacy. I'm starting one. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Oh, fair except enough. Yeah. Uh, my roommate Eli, he's like six four. I stand on his shoulders sometimes. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Pastor Will, is there is there a, a dead guy? That's not Jesus, that, but you're like, this is the one that I look to his legacy and try to, I don't know, imitate or build off of. Yeah, I, I think Martin Luther King Jr. Um, is is one that, that I look up to in terms of what he fought for, for, for race and racism and, and desegregation and, and those things that, you know, I think uh, in college, I read some of his sermons and I was pretty convicted by those sermons and uh, the, the white church, the lukewarm uh, white church that was trying to say, well, maybe slow down. Maybe you needed to like, you know, take your time with this. He's like, no, there's a sense of urgency here that we need, <laughs> to, we need to step up. And so uh, for me, Martin Luther King Jr., um, you know, as a Lutheran, you, know, you might think oh, yeah. that I'd say Martin Luther, but uh, as a Lutheran minister, but yeah, yeah, he, he, he did, he sparked the reformation, but, but Martin Luther King Jr., uh, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. say that one for now. Solid choice. Yeah. So what are what are some ways, practical ways that we can remember, you know, Martin Luther King Jr., C.S. Lewis, T.J.? Uh, <laughs> what are some ways that we could just remember those who've gone before us year round, like not just for Halloween or not just for All Saints Day? What is something that we can do that would better help us kind of keep this at the forefront a little bit? You know what I mean? Um, I'll start. I'll start. Maybe it'll help if I start um, for me. 
with remembering C.S. Lewis, I pay, I honor his work in his books by whenever I see that he's quoted Don Quixote or something, I take the time to read these other works that he built his off of and to appreciate the things he appreciated and see if maybe I can see some of what he saw in these works. And it doesn't matter what time of the year it is. When I read C.S. Lewis and I come across that, that's just something that I do. Is there anything for you, Pastor Will, that you're like, this is, uh, maybe it's even a loved one personally that you're like, this is just something I do to remember them. Yeah, I think uh, I, yeah. when I go back to Martin Luther King Jr., like I, I think he has a day, you know, he yeah. has an American uh, holiday where we take the day off and hopefully do a day of service, you know, and I, I hate to relegate like just right. Uh, healthy race relations just one day in in january (laughs) um but but so hopefully you're working towards that each and every day uh when you go out and about in society so that's that's what i you know especially after the summer of george floyd and and all that like i we've made a considered effort to to not just read a book and think we're going to fix racism but really do the hard work in it and really reflect on that so um and i and i do think yeah, I, I I think just getting in touch with your own your own family or family tree and understand where you're coming from and, and where you're going is, is pretty important uh, to understand who you are and and not repeating mistakes of your family, uh, but also drawing out the gifts and, and trying to help the, the next generation do that. Um, yeah, and I don't know, you know, are we going to talk about like, is it okay for now and me to talk about Jesus and him talking about do this and remember to me or is that another spot? You you can go ahead, but yeah, yeah. I think also like a big a big part of of our faith in in the Christian tradition is like this meal that Jesus shared with his disciples, and he was sharing the Passover meal. But a part of that meal, he attaches that to his own identity and says, "Do this in remembrance of me." So yeah, we remember Jesus every day, but there's a physical act there of sharing bread and wine and reflecting mm-hmm. on his body and blood, the sacramental nature of of his presence with us. Um, that we call the Eucharist, which is a Greek word that means Thanksgiving. But within that is the command is do this in remembrance for me. Remember me. And that's a big part of what this movie is, remembering uh, our loved ones, remembering those who have gone before us. And that's a big part of extending the ministry of who Jesus is in the world, remembering yeah. him. And we will now close out with TJ's rendition of Remember Me. No. <laughs> All right. Well, TJ, is there anything that you do for loved ones or Jesus that you try to remember year round? Uh, I talk about my family. My heritage is uh, pretty important to me. Yeah. I'm Let's really go. surprised you didn't say Sir Francis Drake. Yeah. At, well, at the, when I first asked you about dead people. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty easy to uh, look. Well, if I'm not a I don't work for the government. Yeah. So. <laughs> Are but, you sure? I don't know if I try. Maybe, maybe you could be. They might work on me. Yeah, that's right. I don't work for them. But, yeah, fair uh, enough. Fair enough. But it, it for half of my family, it's pretty easy to remember them uh, because they're in pop culture references and they're easy to track, and we can go all the way back because it's. So Sir I don't Francis know this Drake. story. Sir Francis Drake is like your great great grandfather. Yeah. Oh man, did not yeah. know this story. Oh, I, I thought he was your dad. Yeah, he's my dad. I'm his. <laughs> Direct son. <laughs> I, I just turned 430. <laughs> I've been telling people. Well, I don't know why they picked these movies for your birth year. Those yeah. things weren't around when you were born. <laughs> no, I was there for the first one. <laughs> yeah. But uh, cool. And then the other side is just important to my heritage, my ethnicity. Uh, I am white, but that means a lot of things. Part of that is Lithuanian. And I'm like, you know, I'm a big fan of the culture. Especially like I got, I got the flag. Uh, oh yeah! But if you've never seen it before, uh, there is a hill of crosses in Lithuania uh, that Christian that you know Eastern European Christians will take a pilgrimage to to leave their own cross, and there are just thousands and thousands of crosses on that's this. Really thing. cool! It's gorgeous. I want to go one day. That, and, uh, that's a really cool way to honor your dead. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, on your dead, what lighting a candle, putting a a, a gravestone, putting a cross, a marker. You know, these reminders so that we don't forget iconography, those things. I mean, we, we can talk about, you know, go down the road of, of monuments, but like, you know, what, what is it that we do that we should remember? And what are those markers that help us remember? I think it's, it's pretty important yeah. so we don't forget. For me, it's just talk about them forever. Never stop talking about them. Yeah. My first time attending 
a Lutheran service. It was All Saints Day Sunday. Yeah. And they were lighting candles for different people in the congregation and let me ask if I wanted to light one. And I get to, I lit one for, because this was right after COVID. So a lot of people just passed away. So they had a whole like cross that they were doing. But I, I lit one for my grandfather who did not die from COVID, who passed away a little bit further away. And it was such a meaningful event to me yeah. just to light a candle amongst other people who were lighting candles and remembering their lost. And it was really cool. And now this year, when my grandmother, who was married to him, just passed away, we were given a lantern and we were able to set it. It's like an electronic one. And it lights the same time as other people who had a lantern for the same thing every day. And it's just a really cool thing. Nice. Yeah, I think rit- ritual is important, you know, and it's, yeah, I mean, it could, like any human, we could take it and twist it and make it something that, you know, whether it's superstition or idolatry, you make anything an idol. But I think most of the, you know, the intent behind it is a ritual to help anchor us into something deeper and to remember something to help us encourage us along the way in our own journey of faith. And life. Yeah, absolutely. Well, guys, I think with that, it is time to wrap this up. And uh, before we give any recommendations or anything in the spirit of Halloween, Dia de Muerta, whatever you want to call it. I have a very simple question for you both. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Pastor Will. Um, the question is only two words, believe it or not. Candy corn. Oh, the can- the controversy of candy corn. Uh, is it good? Is it not? Is it just an anathema to all other candies? Is it, is it uh, uh, your favorite? And if you say it's your favorite and then you get kicked out of communities and families because you actually like the candy? You're building up way too much anticipation. Uh, and to my say, <laughs> I, I actually do like candy corn. Me too. I will say it's Joe not my favorite. Me for it. <laughs> yeah, it's not my favorite. It's not like I'm going to. I'm gonna go to the store specifically to buy it. But oh, but I I like it. It's it's it's. <laughs> yeah, I think he sounds convicted. You know what I also like though? It's not candy corn, but it's made out of the same material. There's little pumpkins. No, there's little I candy got, pumpkins. I got it's the, the whole, same thing as candy corns, right? Yeah, I got the whole variety pack. Okay. Because I remembered that Tiffany liked candy corn. And it turns out that my wife only likes candy corn. She doesn't like the other one. She doesn't like the pumpkins. She doesn't like the ones with the chocolate it's, it's, bottoms. Yeah, I like yeah. the chocolate bottom ones. Those are good. Yeah, that's what I feel. I feel like it's, it's the, the same. same. Thing. It's the same. It's the same. And I started, because of this, I started like picking and choosing out of the variety pack and trying each of them, like trying to see if I could tell the difference. <laughs> and then doing like weird combos. Like, what does it taste like if I do two of the chocolate ones and a pumpkin together? And what does it taste like if I do? <laughs> I don't know if I've had the chocolate ones, but I, I'm not. I, there's definitely people who feel strongly about Halloween who also feel strongly about candy corn. But I, I don't I don't think it's horrible and I could eat it. Um, oh. I will I will confess I'm, oh. I'm diabetic, so I got to watch that. But if my blood sugar is getting low and I need like some sugar to boost it up a little bit, um, it's probably not the first thing I grab, but if I, if it's the only thing available, I'll gladly eat it, and I don't think it tastes horrible. Oh, man, well, well, with that, TJ, you, you got to tell us how, how do you feel about this candy corn situation? Okay, all right, fair enough. Like, yeah, fair enough. I'll eat it, I guess. Yeah, and with that, guys, I, uh, <laughs> I hope you all will. Well, first, first, let's do recommendations. I need you all to to check out Hellboy in Love. No, I've not read it yet. It just came out Wednesday. I was broke until today. I was in the day this released. Not the day I'm recording it. I'm still broke, which is why I haven't read it. But when this releases, I will have read it, and I will have loved it, and I will have wanted all of you to read it. So, Hellboy in Love, issue number Man. one, Mike Magnolia. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as someone who goes to the comic book store every Wednesday to pick up his pull list and stack of comics, sometimes it's taller, sometimes it's shorter, sometimes it's more expensive, depending on what's on my pull list and what they try to bait me with. I did buy Hellboy in Love, <sighs> issue number one, and it might be the hot pick of the week, uh, but uh, I have to read it first Man. and check it out. And um, by the time you're listening to this, you can go back to our Instagram page and say, hey, did Will choose for New Comic Book Day, Hot Pick of the Week, Hellboy in Love? Well, I hope he did. You can go back and, and, and go find our, our Instagram page and, and see. Yeah, I'll find out. But I hope he did. Time travel. Here we are. Guys, and remember, you can always go over to systematicgeekology.org. Uh, not right now. The website's down temporarily. But when it's back up, you can go. You can hit host. Will's name, my name, TJ's name are all there. You can click on it, see all the other things we do, all the other episodes we're on, check them out. And then we need you to remember that we are all a chosen people 
a geekdom of priest. This was an Anazal Ministries podcast. If you enjoyed this show and would like to learn more about our network, be sure to check out the Anazal Ministries podcast network.